Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark. Welcome to my studio. So what have we got for you today? Well, since posting this little snow scene a couple of weeks ago, link up here if you haven't tried it yet, I've had literally th hundred, five or six people request another snow scene. So this is what we're going to do today. So come and join me. Now, there's no photographic reference today because this is just something from my memory. Now, although I've lived most of my life here in the UK, I spent four years as a child growing up in Canada. Go Leafs. So this is just a tribute, a little memory of mine to the beautiful countryside. Get on with it. Let's make a start, shall we? Materials for today, my normal three primaries, cobalt blue, alizarin crimson, cadmium yellow, some cadmium orange, yellow ochre and Payne's grey and some burnt umber. Now in the description below are some alternatives which you could use if you don't have these. My paper is some Bockingford Rough, 200 pound, but any decent watercolour paper will do. I have my two inch mince pie and my brushes large mop, number 12 round, three quarter inch flat, number six round, and my trusty number three rigger. Off we go. And as always, a pencil sketch is free to download from my website. Link below in the description. With my mop, I start by wetting the paper, and then with my flat brush, I'm painting in wet in wet some cobalt blue for just a very simple graduated sky. And then just a few strokes in the snow. Now I'm adding in some alizarin crimson to about a 50-50 mix to get this nice purpley color. Next, I'm running this very wet mix right down to the snow line. Now I'm just adding a tiny amount of yellow ochre into the mix and using my flat brush again I'm painting this tree line directly on top with a nice jagged edge to suggest some trees. Then dropping in wet in wet some cadmium orange. And here, just some clean water to soften the top edge in a few places. Now, the reason why I painted that first purple wash right down to the bottom is to allow us to layer the washes, always painting light to dark. Otherwise, you would never line up the washes if the first wash didn't run underneath. Next, with my number 12 brush and some yellow ochre, Let's paint in the cabin, some bushes, and a few other details. Then drop in some watery Payne's Grey into the base here. And here I've just added a little burnt umber and a touch of Payne's Grey again. Okay, some cobalt blue here for the stream. Thank you. 
and again dropping in some darker values into the wet wash to suggest some reflections. So what I'm doing here is just dropping in some clean water. So when I paint in some cobalt blue, I get some lovely soft graduated edges. Next, I'm just adding in some cadmium yellow into my blue mix. Then, I'm going to lightly spray this area here so as to give these pines a nice blurry edge. Then, with the wooden end of my brush, I'm scoring in a few details. Same thing over here with these smaller trees. Now with my rigger, just a little more detail. Now I'm adding just a little burnt umber into some yellow ochre for the shadow side of the cabin. Now for a little dry brush technique. Keep your brush nice and flat to the paper and lightly kiss the top of the texture you get this wonderful effect. Right, cobalt blue again, nice and wet with my number 12 brush. Now quickly, without hanging about, mix in some Payne's Grey and drop in some dark reflections. And while it's still wet, also a little touch of yellow ochre. So now we need to let this totally dry, so it's a perfect time for a short break and a shot of Yukon Jack. So now it's had a chance to dry with the darker mix, a few ripple details. So next it's time to paint the trees. Now what I like to do with landscapes, which include trees, is imagine that the plain is divided up into three sections. First, the distant trees, which I paint as simple blobby shapes with no detail and usually with a bluish tone. Next is the middle ground, and that's what we're painting today. So what I like to do is use the dry brush technique to give this sense of some detail without it looking overworked. A little clean water always helps to blur out some of the edges. The other way is to brush stroke in all the details, but I find that not only is this laborious to paint, it doesn't have that look and that flair of something painted with more spontaneity. 
and I know which one I prefer. And finally, the third is the foreground, where you can paint in detail and even put in each individual leaf. And I think all of this just helps to give this sense of distance. So my colour is some yellow ochre with a touch of cadmium orange and just a tiny drop of cobalt blue. So what I'll often do is just have a little practice first on some scrap paper before committing to my painting. And inevitably the practice versions are better than the final attempts as you tend to be more relaxed. But hey, you just gotta dive in. and softening again with some clean water. Okay, so while my trees are drying, I'm just painting in with some cobalt blue, a few details here and there. Now for the colour of my trees, this is a 50-50 mix of cobalt blue and burnt umber. Now with my number 6 brush I'm painting in the main trunks. Now try and paint these with as few strokes as possible, they always look more natural. Now with my number 3 rigger, some of the finer branches. Just keep that brush flowing with nice quick positive strokes. Now I'm painting in this side exactly the same way, using my number six to start. Wow, look at that lovely shaft of light. I wish I'd painted it like that, but it's just coming in from the studio window.
Now for some details in the hut and the little footbridge and again not trying to be too precise. Okay, now it's time for my smudging with a damp tissue technique. Just gives a nice misty effect and breaks up some of those harder edges. Of course, I love a little touch of white pastel pencil for a few highlights here and there. And now with some Payne's Grey, a few dark reflections in the water. And I think we're just about done. Just need to sign it. No, hang on a minute. Let's give the poor guy sitting there on his own a fire to keep him warm. It's cold up there, you know. Well, I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did and you'll give it a go. And most of all, enjoy the experience because it'll always show in your work. Now, if you're watching this in the future, thanks for watching and see you all again soon. But if you're someone who's been following each week, then I'd just like to say Happy Christmas, everyone. I hope you have a good one and we get better things next year. Stay positive, stay safe, and look forward to seeing you all again very soon. Bye for now.